Crossroads Media. Well, that was an interesting one. We'll break it all down before we do. If you're new to the channel, hit that thumbs up button and that subscribe button as well. I can't thank you enough for all your crazy support. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and all your podcasting platforms. So if you hit subscribe there, leave a five-star rating and a review, that will go a long, long, long way for the algorithm. So thank you so much for that. And lastly, if you want more Broads Media content, every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m., we live live stream here on YouTube with Coffee with Broad. So we have our coffee together. We kick it. It's super fun. The information is down below in the description. The way you get access is join the membership here for $4.99 a month. You also get a link to our Discord channel where we communicate live during games. You don't want to miss it. So thank you guys all for the crazy ass support and enjoy the show. We call those sanity wins. Sanity wins. Because if you don't win... <laughs> I go insane. So I need it for my sanity. Good win, boys. Great win, boys. Thank you, Nick Castellano. Single, double, home run, a bomb, some would say. <laughs> hey, they don't ask how. They ask how many. Thank you, Christopher Sanchez, for giving up zero runs. That would be zero runs. Wanted to make sure that that perfectly went through your eardrums. Zero runs. One for good measure. Zero runs. <laughs> Third inning, bases loaded. Change up, Flores, swing and a miss. Change up, Flores, swing and a miss. Went down 0 2. Well, the final pitches, the second and the third, were what the change ups were. The other was a sinker. My point is, dominant for his six scoreless with seven Ks. Only one walk all day long. Really good from him. But I think the major storyline, of course, is what happened with Bryce Harper. And there were a billion things that happened to Bryce Harper. A swing where he felt discomfort. A play over at first base where he felt discomfort, obviously. The temper tantrum in the dugout where he's throwing bats and throwing crap at the wall before going down into the tunnel. Then he gets two pitches way too inside. Harrison needs to get kicked out of the league. Kicked out of the league. You don't touch my superstar like that, you idiot. You go right back inside. Stop it. Don't give me the my bad. This dude got smoked in the face by Blake Snell not too long ago and costed him way too much time. So to bark, for Bryce to bark, shut your ass up, Pat Burrell. Throwing swings. I didn't actually swing, but pushes. The hell do you think you are? What a joke. So, yeah, emotional ride looking at Bryce. And then after all that said and done, in that same at-bat, because he didn't actually get hit, it hit the knob of the bat, he didn't run out a ground ball, which led to controversy because the first baseman was pulled off the bag, and maybe if he hustled, it could have been a bang-bang or he could have been safe. But is that a product of him not being healthy and you have to live with that? Is that a product of sometimes Bryce just does that and he is okay? Because his RBI that led to some insurance late, that swing looked totally beautiful. So if there's nothing wrong later on in the game, how could I imagine that there was anything wrong in that at-bat where he almost got smoked? Maybe he was just frustrated, couldn't believe it, was in a state of shock. So when that at-bat was over, he was able to breathe a bit. But he wasn't mentally checked in because he saw his light flash before his eyes again. I don't know. But it does bring up an interesting conversation because when Bryce Harper got kicked out, I was more of, of the, um, I, I was under the impression, and obviously he didn't get kicked out of this game. I'm referencing when he got kicked out in Colorado in the first inning of game one. I was under the impression that 
That's just the umpire being miserable at his job, right? That's someone who has watched Angel Hernandez, C.B. Buckner, who else? Joe West for years and years and years, and he thinks, well, that's how they do it, so I'm going to follow suit, even though they are the biggest dumbasses in Major League Baseball history, right? But there were a lot of people who were mad at Bryce for the way that he carried himself in that situation, and I don't really feel as passionately about that as others do. I think it's great to care so much about a random at-bat in the middle of May, in the late stages of May, excuse me, a little deeper in the season than the middle of May. But at the late, late uh, late, late month of May, if you're going all out and you're worried about pitches in the late stages of May, that's the way I want you to be wired. If you are angry because of certain things, you missed a pitch, you thought it was a home run, but instead you foul it back or it goes foul, you just, you thought something could happen in that at bat, you end up not executing, so you get mad at yourself and you put that much emphasis on at bats throughout the regular season, that's what makes you great, right? And I do feel that is the best way to digest the Bryce Harper experience, if that makes sense. With that said, though, it does sometimes cross a line, and I'm all for having emotional leaders. There's no doubt about it that I don't know if Bryce is necessarily the rah-rah guy, right? We've been through this a ton of different times when Bryce Harper, uh, not Bryce Harper, excuse me, when Reese Hoskins was here, when Andrew McCutcheon was here, what Kyle Schwarber brings to the table from a vocal leader standpoint. So, you know, Bryce is definitely more of the emotional, watch what I do, watch how I play. Play. I inspire by my dedication to the game, my love for the game, my insane level of focusing on details when it comes to this game. That's what rubs off on every single player that plays with Bryce Harper. He has the fire, right? But it's similar to, if you're a hockey guy, Travis Konechny, let's say. And the team buzzes as Travis Konechny buzzes. He's a past. If you're watching the Stanley Cup playoffs, Matthew Kachuk, he's an emotional leader out there. When he's causing trouble after the whistles, the team seems to say, hey, I got that guy's back. I'm going to fight because I know that guy's fighting for me right now. That's the general vibe of an emotional leader on the field, the watch how I play type of player. And that's all great and dandy. I, I think Bryce went a tiny step too far in this one. And maybe he's mad because he felt his back got tight. I, I don't I don't necessarily know. And I want to keep an eye on NBC Sports Philadelphia's Twitter page because they obviously put up a lot of updates from what Rob Thompson says and what Bryce Harper is going to say as well. But, of course, Ricky Bo says someone should have gotten their butt kicked. <laughs> I love that, man. Ricky Bo is one of the best. I love him to death. I love him to death. But, yeah, I mean, I, I want to see exactly what went down or, you know, hey, did you not feel right? Was something a little off? Because when he was over at first and the ball came to him and it was thrown to him and he didn't get off the bag and then he's hunched over and he's leaning on his legs and you could tell that he was not 100%. Why is he also going through that tantrum in the clubhouse? Is it solely that he missed the pitch? Is it solely because he thought he could have done more damage? Or because dating back to spring training, he had to miss at-bats and miss time to get ready for opening day because there was something that was tweaked. And when you watch the replay of him taking a swing, it looked more like he was uncomfortable than it was, ah, I should have smoked that one. Ah, that one should have been in the stands. You could tell when it's that rat. We've seen him take hacks where he misses it by a hair and he recognizes, dude, on any other day, that's a piss missile. In any other at at bat, that thing is scorched into the gap, you motherfucker. That's normally what you get. You know that look. This look was, I'm not right. So I'm just trying to piece this all together and figure out how to handle it and how I should feel about it because there's almost five or six different things happening here. 
Why didn't he run it out? Is it because he was mad about getting thrown at high with some chin music? Is it because he's not healthy? Why is he angry? Why is he throwing the tantrum? What does that say to the team? Is it too much? Is he crossing the line? Is there a correlation with how fired up he was when he was screaming at the umpire and getting kicked out of the game for a random ball strike call that he thought the ump missed that wasn't missed? Like I, I, I don't know. There's, there's a lot here, and I got no problem with him playing with this level of intensity that describes him loving the game. But just like anyone who plays like that, there's always a line. And I guess I need more information on what's actually happening health-wise to help me break down all of this. There's so many what-ifs. There's so many, well, this can mean that, and that can mean this. I don't know. I, I'm a little lost right now, and obviously the last pitch was about seven or eight minutes ago, so I haven't fully gotten to really secure it all and, and uh, you know, like base a, a feeling on it yet. I'm just being honest with you. I'm being honest with you. So I don't know. But, yeah, I, the Bryce thing's interesting. I don't, this is what I do know, though. I don't like at all, at all, how he handled not running out that at bat, that ground out, that pulled the first baseman off the bag when there was the chin music. That's unacceptable. Of course, we would have all loved the home run, and then he would have pimped it. He would have stared down Harrison. We would have had another RC a moment. Someone would have captured it, and you can hang it in the lore, as you say, with some of those memes dancing around social. Yeah, that one's going up. It's getting framed, and we're going to be talking about it forever because it was so outrageous. That's what we would like, but it still would have been fucking awesome for him to smoke it over to the left side of the infield, run his ass off down the first base and beat it out as his foot hits the bag. First baseman's getting yanked and pulled to his right. You could see Bryce go, hey! you could, he calls it himself. You could see him call it himself as the umpire does it too. The ump has a little passion in it because he's feeling the energy shift in the game. Auto. Hey! Hey! That's right, then Bryce starts clapping. Here we go. Here we go. You see the difference? You see the difference here on, on how that brings it to the clubhouse? And it's all the same. Like, that play's the same. Nothing changed in that play except for his hustle. But is he broken down right now? Do we have a 75% Bryce? And you have to live with maybe the 50% base running because, well, something's not right in his back. He did go down to get looked at for a reason. I highly doubt he reacted physically the way he did in the early stages of this game. And the takeaway is he's 100% okay. Right? Like, what are the odds that Bryce has to literally put both hands on his knees, almost take a deep breath, catch himself talk himself into <laughs> getting get himself ready again, and he's 100%? Come on, man. No way in hell. No way in hell. So maybe that's why. I just know that later on in the game, I saw an outstanding RBI. The at-bat looked good. His swing looked good, and there was nothing wrong with it. So I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing, trying to find answers here. But I know for damn sure, I didn't love the effort running down first base. And once in a blue moon, when he is okay, and there's no speculation on injury or health, he does give you a little lollygag down to first base, which I can live with because over 162, it's just humanly impossible to run out every single ground ball full speed Every time. I, I'm not one of those old school Charlie Manuel has to bench Jimmy Rollins kind of guy. Like, I, I, that's not how deep I go with it. But it takes some things to get me a little rattled in the you're not hustling department. And just to give you an example, this would be one of them. Unless we get an update that he is seriously hurt. And that's one of the things you have to live with. Although, I really doubt that Rob Thompson is going to say post game, yeah, Bryce is just torched inside. His body is just beaten down inside. They, they would never say that publicly. So we'll never know. We'll never know. But maybe Bryce is saying I'm sore and then that's more of the, the sprinkle 
the more of the, hey, I'm not going to go too far and give you everything that's going on, but just know it's not solid right now. Just speculating. Just speculating. I do find it odd that nothing from Rob yet. Uh, It's been a little bit of time. You're telling me we got nothing from Rob Thompson. Nothing from the beat reporters. Maybe they're trying to get some updates. I don't know. What? One, oh, that was one hour ago. Oh, man. Okay. That's not important. All right, we'll run to the Anytime Hotline and take your calls. Let's see how the people feel about it. Did I miss anything else? Oh, yeah, Stubbs, two hits, had a run. Pache with an RBI, that was cool. Kyle Schwarber with a leadoff bomb because he's the greatest leadoff hitter to ever exist in humankind, in mankind, on Earth as specimens. Guy just rakes, guys just rakes. And if you saw on Twitter, I posted a picture of me in Brooklyn with my nice Wawa Schwarbaum hat and said, oh, baby, Brooklyn's feeling it. Brooklyn knows one's coming. And then, of course, I had to go stop at Wawa as well for a nice fat Wawa hazelnut coffee with a little hazelnut creamer. I don't normally put sugar in there, but just for a little, how do you do? Because everybody knows I need some more adrenaline late at night. I didn't want to give you a stinker of a show. I didn't want to give you a show where afterwards, when it's all said and done and it's over, you go, that's it? Broads gave us nothing today. There was no fire. There was no energy. He was basically doing the show in ASMR form. <laughs> you know, you can't have that. Wawa, get yours today. Um, Whit Merrifield doubles, and then what happens? Gets picked off over at second. Yo, dude. Yo, dude. What are you doing, dude? Come on, dude. He ended up coming around the score eventually when the Phillies were getting walked a bit late. But still, what does Whit do? I've given you long enough. I've given you a big leash. When is enough enough? I mean, you finally do something that good, and then you screw yourself over? You're too smart of a baseball player to to do that. And don't say he's not. He is. He is. He's too good of a baseball player to get picked off a second base like that, no matter how good of a pickoff move it was. Please, this guy's played a lot of baseball. He's seen a lot of good pickoff moves. He's been on base a lot. Dude has over 1,200 hits. He's been on base a lot. I actually thought that might have been a homer. (laughs) I really did, which would have been nice to maybe try and spark some positivity for him. But I digress. It's just not there. All right, it's just not there. All right, let's go to the Anytime Hotline. I'll shut up. Hey, Broads. Um, just want to say this series was definitely a little bit frustrating. Um, it was super awesome that we didn't end in a total sweep, but it's definitely frustrating when we strand so many players on base and can't actually capitalize on some things. Um, I know we're going to win some, lose some, which is totally understandable, but definitely have to watch back what we're doing and try to improve a little bit so that way, you know, we are not leaving so many people on base and those could have been possible scores. But overall, um, I think this series was just kind of like a little humbling just to say, okay, well, you know, we were on a good streak and of course we're going to lose some, but now we just got to take the day off tomorrow and kind of rest and get back to it. So, go fails. Well, thank you so much for the call. Yeah, having the off day to regroup is solid. You come back home, you get to see a team in Citizens Bank Park before you go and, and situate your, yourself out in London to play the New York match. You are an abomination, but something scares me just because of the travel. I shouldn't be scared. That team can't keep a save to save their lives. I mean, poor Edwin Diaz, he now goes to the IL, I saw. I, I mean, they, they can't win games. They can't can't win games. So I don't want these last two series away from home being on the West Coast where they clearly have issues in San Francisco to begin with. I can't let that dictate my feelings going to London when they're playing a Mets team, right? I can't. I can't. And I know that there's time until we get there, so I have to settle down. But anywhere away from home, just because of Colorado, just because of Oracle, is not sitting 
hitting well with me currently. So I just need to see them beat up St. Louis and take control and get back to their comfortable playing, uh, uh, their, their playing and their desire to win so I can take a deep breath and feel better about things when they do go over the pond, if you will. That's what they say, right? That's what they say. Uh, they had a lot of hits today, though. So when you have a lot of hits, I, I do think you're going to obviously leave a lot of guys on base because while you're constantly smoking the ball around, at some point the inning needs to end and you need to record outs. And when you do, there's probably going to be people on base, right? Because you are stringing together a lot of hits. But yeah, I mean, I, I got no issue with this game in particular. I think it was pretty solid. They were in control the whole entire time. You used the word humbling, and I think that's fair. I think that's fair. This game can humble you rather quickly as Alec Bohm alluded to previously with some of his comments that some days you can just flat out suck so yeah no doubt about it and maybe that's a good thing maybe that's a good thing it, it does seem physically that is to the eye that they are having a bit of an issue not accepting it but handling it I don't know the Bohm stuff and then obviously some of the Bryce Harper stuff lately I don't know it's humbling. You're going to go through those ups and downs. It seems like everybody is aware of that in the clubhouse. But the way Bohm's body language was when he wasn't in the lineup, I didn't think I loved. I didn't like his body language and some of his comments post-game. Uh, just wouldn't be the way I would do it. I get where he's coming from. But I just didn't like the eye test from it. And it doesn't seem like they've handled it well just from a physical and emotional standpoint. I don't know if that's good or bad. Maybe that means the off day comes around. They can all take a breather. They could kick it. They can relax and then get comfortable at home and just pretend it never happened and move forward knowing that they're a spectacular team. Or it lingers and that stench, that terrible smell, that black cloud follows them longer because they're trying to do too much and they come home to play the Cardinals and they want to prove that they can still sweep teams and they want to try and crush them. But when they attempt to, by having that mentality doing so, they somewhat slip, they chase pitches, they try and pull a pitch that they should go the other way with, which results in a ground out instead of, a, a nice single or a nice double on the opposite field, somewhere in the opposite field. So, I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and maybe I'm allowing these last six games to put these negative thoughts in my mind irrationally and prematurely, and I'm not going to disagree with that. I think it's very possible, even with a big win today. I call this the sanity win, and it is a sanity win. Trust me, I probably would have been significantly worse and probably feeling a lot, lot, a lot of pain if they got swept in San Fran. So this is me feeling relatively good, all things considered. Not going to lie. All right, we'll take another call. What up, bros? I think my previous call got cut off, but... I'll keep it quick and simple. I mean, I don't know. Something about Coors Field and Oracle Ballpark, the Phillies just have not been able to produce over the past few years there. I don't know what it is. I mean, San Francisco is just – fuck San Francisco, okay? Between the Niners and Oracle Park, it's just it's just fucking stupid. Um, but, listen, you got to look at it at a macroscopic level. The Phillies swept Washington, swept Texas and lost four out of six in the last two series. We're eight and four in our last 12. And that's essentially winning two out of three in all of those four series combined. So, I mean, I can't really complain too much. Yes, the bats were dead. No one hit the ball with runners in scoring position at all in the last six days, for the most part. So that was pretty upsetting. But, I mean, let's just turn it around when we get back to CBP. I hate San Francisco just as much as you hate San Francisco all around the sports scene for sure. But I'm laughing a little bit because what you're doing is you're spinning it to make it not as bad as it is. And it's not terrible. You're right. What you said is facts. What you said is technically true. If you break up the games differently and you break up the series, break up a 10-game stretch, you can always find ways to spin numbers to make it not look as bad, right? If you look at a 6-game span compared to a 10-game span compared to a 12-game span, it could tell a different story and make you feel good about it. But at the end of the day, they were set up as a team with such an insane record going to Colorado 
like dropping that shit. I uh, I don't know. I, I can't do it. I can't do it because I almost know that even though you are statistically correct and you are true with the mathematic side of it, because you're spitting it the way you're spitting it, let alone what the actual facts say. It's not about what the facts say. It's about knowing that you're spitting it to make yourself feel better. Something about that doesn't sit right with me. So I appreciate it. And if that works for you, then by all means, take it a ride, baby. I don't want anybody to feel down. I don't want anybody to feel sour tastes in their mouths. I don't want anything like that. So whatever it is in life that tickles your fancy, by all means, grab onto it, baby. But I'm just saying, in regards to me, I laugh because I hear it and I go, well, yeah. now reality is these six games sucked. These six games sucked as a total package. And there's nothing you can say to change that for me. You should have done better against the Rockies. You should have done better against San Fran. You played piss poor defense defensively in the in that game against San Fran with Taiwan Walker. Uh, man, what do we do? They didn't know where to throw the ball at either. That was was that the Walker game? Yeah, 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 cuz you got six scoreless from Wheels in, in, in that was the one nothing extra inning game. Oh god. <laughs> How could I forget? I was up till 2 a.m. trying to figure out what I was doing with my life. Now, it looks like here the San Francisco Giants on NBC Sports in San Francisco, he says Kyle has Harrison that says, reflecting on the benches clearing today, he said he was surprised by Bryce Harper's reaction. I would have gone in again. Why not? Why not? Because you don't know how to control yourself. Because you can't command your pitches and you almost smacked a superstar in the jaw. So because you suck, that's why. Why not? Be because you suck. Because you can't control your pitches. So you may severely take off somebody's head. Not just hit them in the leg, drill them in the thigh. Almost took out his face. So why should you maybe look at other parts of the play? And here's another thing too. He's such a liar. Because look at where some of those pitches were after. My man was afraid because he had no confidence. Talking a big game now, wasn't one of those pitches eight feet off the plate on the outside part of the corner? Wasn't he starting to dance around the outside part of the plate on the corner, if I'm not mistaken? So how about this? So Mike's in front of his face, and he's talking a big game post game about, oh, I'd go back it. I mean, you did go back in the second time. Don't get me wrong. But then after that, you... You became a little bitch. You became a little bitch. If you had balls, you'd say, guess where I'm coming again. But if you actually had skill to go with those balls, you would do it and actually pinpoint it with precision. But no, you don't get that. Of course not. Dude's a clown. Absolute clown. So still nothing. Still nothing from Robert Bryce. That's insane. So maybe something's up. I don't know. Insane. Unless he spoke and not one person talked about it. Uh, uh, uh. What's going to happen is I'm going to end the show and then all the... All the quotes from Rob are going to pop up, but... I mean, I do this every day. I know about the timeline of when I hear from people. So I don't know. That's weird to me. They trying to get together and say, how do we handle this Bryce stuff? Oh, Bryce responded. Okay. Why is San Francisco's NBC Sports getting out information quicker than our own? I wasn't really that mad. All right. Wh why don't we listen to Bryce? I want to listen to Bryce so you can get my instant reaction to that. All right. It's on NBC Sports San Francisco. So if Bryce is talking, that means Rob had to have. Whatever. Whatever. And San Fran Giants, NBC Sports. Here you go. NBC Sports. Uh, you literally can't hear anything. There's too much music playing in the background, and uh, he pretty much just said he didn't want to get hit in the face again, and that's why he was aggravated is because he dealt 
with this before. He experienced something similar to this before, and he was angry because of that. So take it for what it is. That makes sense to me, right? I don't think that that's shocking. He had to deal with an issue similar to this in the past, so that's why he sort of barked as quickly as he did. So I get it. But, yeah, that audio didn't give us much, unfortunately. You just couldn't hear a damn thing he was saying. We'll take one more call and then wrap things up. Rhodes, that was the game that I needed to see to make it make me proud to call myself a Nick Castellanos defender. Finally, he does something for this team. I'm so happy for him. Um, Christopher Sanchez, really, really good today. Like, some of these pitches that he throws, I really can't believe how far it's he's come since being that that middle starter back a couple of years ago. He's like he's like a serious threat to these batters. Um, I don't want to let Bryce Harper get off for not hustling to the bag. That's like not the first time that we've seen that. And I know that that's something you kind of take with him for the big hits and the home runs. Um, but like, come on, man, you cost your team a run today. You can't be doing that. Yeah. Um, hundred percent. And I'm just, and I just have one more question for you. So does it not make you sad to see, you know, Spencer Turnbull, who was once a, such a good starter for this team this season, um, be forced in mop up duty and definitely kind of like forced to adjust to this new role because Taiwan Walker makes eight hundred makes eighteen million dollars um, a year. Um, like I get why you know you're defending Taiwan Walker, you know veteran pitcher who's got a lot of wins for this team in the past. But like Spencer Turnbull, to me, he just deserves better. But good win for the Phillies today. Uh, finally, you get a win in that ballpark. Appreciate it, man. Good call. I agree with you on the Bryce stuff. I do think that that is ridiculous. I, I need more out of him there. I think it's okay to criticize Bryce, right? Sometimes we live in a world where fans don't want to criticize Maxi. They don't want to criticize Bryce. But, hey, they'll throw Joel Embiid under the bus in a second. Hey, everybody hates this guy, that guy, the other guy. But Bryce, he's untouchable because he chose us. No, you're right. You do live with all the positives, even though there are some flaws in his game. And sometimes he does have these efforts that annoy you. But that one was a little different. Right, I, I don't think this fits in the standard, hey, you live with that one. Like, no, dude, come on, Bryce. There was a lot of motion in that at bat, and you just you got to be better there. So the Turnbull thing is, I, I really... Okay. Um, the Turnbull thing. Sorry, I'm looking over at my soundboard here because I realize some of the audio levels are screwed up, and if I end up hitting end record here and it's not what it needs to be, I'm going to be pissed. So I just got sidetracked. But I do feel bad for Spencer Turnbull. I don't like the role that he's in. I also don't think that he is a lights-out, insane starter that would have lasted all season long as some dominating force. Now, I don't know that. And it does suck now because he's pretty much useless and you can't really ask him to go five or six innings after you removed him from that role and made him a one-inning pitcher, right? So when you're a one-inning guy, you got to stretch yourself back out. It's a whole process. So, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Prior to seeing what Taiwan Walker did for you this year, whether you'd like to admit it or not, he did deserve, based off of his track record, to start again. Uh, you know? So, if Turnbull was doing good, and Taiwan Walker got hurt in spring training, and it took him a bit to get going, and then he finally was able to get back, I, I would say, uh, the guy's a veteran MLB pitcher who's been around forever. He does deserve to get starts. And, and whether it's right or wrong... Before seeing any of Taiwan Walker starts and looking at Turnbull and Walker, Walker deserves to start more than him regardless of money made based off of pedigree, based off of, uh, d that's just how this goes, is veterans, people, Nick Castellanos hasn't been benched once yet, <laughs> right? If if that was Rojas, if that was anybody else, someone who's just getting started, a rookie, a first-year guy with a bunch of options, they get sent down. But Nick gets a long leash because he's a veteran, so... I do feel bad for Spencer Turnbull. I don't like the fact that they treated him this way and he went from really good starter to basically you're a nobody and you throw one inning when the game's essentially over. That's a huge difference in extreme. I thought maybe he could fulfill your role of Sir Anthony Dominguez. Now, the problem is Spencer Turnbull 
hasn't been doing well in those spots. So that's also a problem on him, right? Like, he's not doing well. It, it sucks that you got pushed in that, but to prove that you are worth it, to prove that you are great, you got to say, yo, screw you. Flip him the double bird and go dominate. So he has made it very difficult on on himself as well because he has failed miserably in these circumstances where the game's essentially over. Come on, man. Like, let's go. Do well. So there's a lot of mixed feelings here. I believe prior to seeing any outcome of Walker starting, he still deserved to get starts. Now we're getting more information. But if he wasn't getting starts, I'd say, what are we doing here? I mean, this guy's an established veteran. Let's give him some starts, if that makes sense. His velocity is super concerning, though. His velocity is super concerning. But that's sort of my answer on it. I agree that it sucks for Turnbull. I do. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you all on the next one.